Hey everyone and welcome back and in this video we're going to build on what we've already learned and we're going to learn how to display images on the screen. There's two major ways to do this excluding screen language. We'll cover screen language in a later video or a later set of videos because it's quite an in-depth topic but in this video we're just going to cover the two most basic ways of displaying an image on the screen. The first thing we need to do is tell RemPy where the image is and to do that we simply use the image command and now we'll give it a name so we're going to say picture one equals and we open our speech brackets now I've already created three images for this demonstration and as you can see they're contained within the images subfolder which you can get to by going into RemPy and saying open directory images and then popping your images inside there so all I need to do is type in the name of the image because it will automatically look in the images folder. So that's what I've done there. Image picture one equals one dot JPEG. Now where it used to say scene BG room, what I'm going to type in here is scene picture underscore one, which is there. So what it will do, it will set the scene as picture one in theory. So let's have a look and see if that will work. We run our program, we start and as you can see it's chosen the image and it's made it our background for the shot. Perfect. So now if we go quit. Now there's another way of achieving the same thing and that would be to change this to show and what that will do is essentially exactly the same thing if we run our program but what you can see is that it's scaled it weird <laughs> and that's because the image resolution is much much bigger than our screen resolution so we'll close this down again now the reason we don't use scene for every shot is because what scene does is it clears the entire screen and it replace and then it places the picture on the screen which is fine in the case of this but if we have a lot going on and you want picture and you want images to change uh, frequently is that what it also does is it clears the say screen or the the speech box off of the screen each time as well so what you will have is throughout the progress of your story is the box constantly disappearing and reappearing which can be a little bit jarring for the viewer so what we tend to do is we use show but what do we need to do to get around the fact that the image doesn't scale is to actually set the image scale when we declare the image so for example we're going to type in image.scale open parentheses we leave our image name the same and we're going to set our resolution like so so now what we're saying is we're defining an image we're calling it picture one and we're telling RenPy that it's this image but it must be scaled to 1920 by 1080 which is our game's resolution so what will happen now is if you're playing the game in a different resolution it will now scale the image to fit the window rather than just showing the image in its native resolution so if we now come back and we show that now as you can see the image is now scaled to whatever size we want our game to be. So that's method one. And now if we wanted to, I'm going to define two more images. I'm just going to copy and paste. And we're going to call them pictures two and three. And they are two and three dot JPEG. So I'm going to get rid of show Eileen happy for now. And we're going to say picture underscore two and then we'll put that after Eileen says how was your day and then we will put show picture three at the end after you've made the choice so I save that and I'll run it now and we'll see what happens 
it's showing us this picture. How was your day? Now we come up with another picture for the choice. My day was great. Thank you, Eileen. I'm glad you had a good day. And then it will load up the last picture. What this does is, it's, is it creates almost a, a Photoshop style layer system. I'm going to remove these comments for now because they're extra code lines that we don't need right now. What's happening is it's placing this picture on the screen. Then it's placing this over the top of it and this over the top of it. So at this point in the code, there are actually three images being rendered onto the screen, but you can only see one. So what we could do is before each image command, we could say hide picture one. And then before this one, we could say hide picture two and save that. And that would give us the same results. But what we're doing now is we're saving memory because we're removing those images from the screen. Although the player doesn't see any difference in the way that the display is shown, we're not using up loads and loads of memory. Because as you can imagine, if we were to have 200 lines of dialogue and a different image for each line of dialogue, A, we're having to type hide for every single image and show for every single image but we're also going to have 200 images stored in the computer's memory at any one given time which is not particularly a good way of doing things but this isn't exactly the right way to do it either so what we're going to do is we're going to remove this and we're going to remove that now if you remember what i said about the scene command is that it clears the display it removes all of the current displayed objects on the screen so what we could do is rather than declaring an image on the screen, we could just simply say scene. And let's see what happens now. It shows us this image. It shows us this image. Now, what you'll notice is that you didn't see any difference. But what's happened is that now it's on the third call this line it removed the two previous images from the screen and then in the following line we rendered this image in there as well now the reason that we don't want to declare picture 3 as the scene's background is because if the game does glitch in any way it may revert back to that image and we don't necessarily want that so this is the probably the most sensible way to do it is we every so often we drop in a scene normally when you're just about to display some more text so that from the game viewer's point of view the say screen hasn't disappeared and reappeared because it disappears for the menu to pop up then we clear the screen of all the images and then we display the say screen again so that's the first way of displaying an image but what happens if we've got thousands and thousands of these and we may want to change certain things um, this is the most basic way but there's another way of doing it so what I'm going to do I'm going to remove this line here and I'm actually going to type in the, to the term expression now you don't necessarily need to worry about what this means right now but what essentially is is happening when you're using the expression command is you're saying whatever happens within the brackets needs to be carried out as a command. So in this case, we're going to say one.jpg. And we're going to save that. And now let's see if that works. Start. As you can see, that's now displayed the image. But of course, we've lost our image scaling properties in this particular method. So not necessarily the best way of doing it in this case, but if you were creating the game, your images specifically for the game, you can make sure that they're all the correct resolution in the first place. And then this would obviously not be an issue. But what this allows us to do is we can now use this to build a string. So for example, if I wanted to say, I want say I want to display all three images in a sequence based on a key press. Now this is a little bit more complicated than we want to do right now, but we can use a while loop 
let's say while t equals less than four. And we're going to declare the variable t equals one. Now, whenever we declare a variable, we have to make sure we use the pound sign in front of it when we're using renpy. If we're doing this in Python, we don't have to, but we'll cover that on a later video. So now we've created this variable called t. And we're saying while t is less than four, and we use a colon there, like that. So now what's going to happen? This is essentially how we create a while loop. So we're saying whilst t is less than four, whatever is happening inside this tab, this indent space needs to keep happening. So now we're going to say t.jpg. I'll explain all of this momentarily. And then we're going to just simply put in click like that. So what's happening here is I've heard that t is 1 while t is less than 4. So it'll go 1, 2, 3. Show this image. Now what we do is if we want to use a variable in the place of text in a string, we put it inside square brackets. So we're saying t is 1. So it'll be 1.jpg. And now if we press t plus equals one, we need to put a pound sign at the start of that as well, because this is within RenPy code. T plus equals one. So once we click the mouse, the value of T will increase by one, and then it'll go to two dot JPEG. Then it'll increase by one. It'll go to three dot JPEG. Now, if we click it again, it'll be four, which means that it will no longer fit within this, so it will stop carrying out this code. So let's just test this and see if it works, because we may need to make a minor change depending on how, how this works. Start, click, click, click. There you go. So what that's done, and then as you can see, t.jpg, there is no 4.jpg, so we actually need to adjust our code here to say that we it will only do this while t is less than 3. So it carries out the code one last time. So now when we run it, we won't get that error. We'll run it again. Click, click, click. And then it'll go into the code. And then it will display, because we've got picture 2 dis, uh, declared, it will run that as so. So now we close out this. So whilst this method of show expression doesn't have the scaling property that you have when you declare an image, it does allow you to dynamically change the image that's on the screen based on changing these variables using this method like so. So it's a little bit more complicated and we have done some things that we haven't covered here, which we'll cover in the next video. Um, but as you can see, that's the two simplest ways to display an image on the screen. So I uh, hopefully they found that useful and I'll see you in the next video.